Heavenly Father, we bless your name for what you are doing for us in this Congress. Thank you for the volume of prayers that have gone to heaven. And thank you for the great volume of answers coming down from heaven. Lord, we know that everyone here, brother, sister, minister, overseer, pastor, whatever challenges we are facing in our families, and whatever challenges we are facing, crisis, in any family, we know the problem is solved. And Lord, we pray that that heavenly solution you have brought already to every family. Lord, I pray that this solution be permanent in Jesus' name. What the tears of your people are weighing. We'll have joy over our children. We'll have joy in our family. And the joy and the fellowship and the love in our families will help us to move forward in the work of the Lord in Jesus' name. We will touch untouched people. We will reach rich people. And Lord, we're going to cover the land in the name of Jesus. And while your people are committed and consecrated to the work you have given us to do, we we'll pray everything that concerns their family, everything that concerns their wives and their husbands, everything that concerns their children, their parents, everything that concerns anything around them. Oh Lord, I pray you will perfect everything in Jesus' name. When we'll come back another time, if Jesus tarries, we'll see all the prayers we prayed individually and corporately, we got answers to them. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you very much. God bless you. We're looking at the final message tonight. Resources for finishing Christ's unfinished work. Resources for finishing Christ's unfinished work many times when people hear that there is christ's unfinished work they can't understand because they've read one verse of scripture and that verse of scripture tells us that christ finished his work we're coming to john look at chapter 4 verse 34 jesus says unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work when we read that we say what he said that was his meat his passion his desire and didn't he finish we're looking at john chapter 17 and we're reading from verse 4 i have glorified thee on the earth I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Again, when we read that, we we'll say, but he said he has finished. He had a desire, he had a passion, and he had the project in front of him. And he said, I want to do that. I want to finish that. And now over here it says, I have glorified you. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. John chapter 19 verse 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. People say, That's fine. Because he said, I have finished the work you gave me to do. And over here he said, It's finished. It's done. It's finished. And so, when we're now talking about Christ's unfinished work, Many people cannot understand that Christ still has an unfinished task or assignment. Let me take you back to the beginning, that is, to Genesis chapter 2. And let's look at God himself, now the Father. And let's see the expression that the Father used concerning the work that he did. We're looking at Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished. And all the host of them finished, done. The Almighty God said, He has done everything. Thus, the heavens and the earth, everything was finished in verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended His work, which He had made. He ended, He finished His work, which He had made. And He rested on the seventh day from all His work, which He had made. But then, 
You understand when Jesus Christ came, John chapter 5, verse 17. I remember what we read in Genesis chapter 2. The Lord finished this work, Almighty God the Father, He finished His work. Chapter 5 of John, verse 17. Jesus answered them, My Father walketh either to and I walk. You see, as you compare that with Genesis chapter 2, when it says, All the work, heavens and the earth. Everything finalized, everything finished. And yet Jesus Christ is saying here, As my father walketh hitherto. That is from that time when it was announced, when it was proclaimed, that the work of the father had finished. Now he said, my father is still at work. That means then, there is an aspect of the work that was finished after the creation. And then there's another aspect of the work that continues and continues until at the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. The same thing as we bring that back to the Lord Jesus Christ. That there are areas of work that are still to be done. And it's the work of Christ. And it's Christ of finished work. Even though the work of redemption. That one is settled on the cross of Calvary. And the work of sin. The, the sin that will make people to be saved. That was finished on the cross of Calvary. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Let us therefore fear. Let's see promise. Being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. And then it says, for unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not be mixed of faith in them that heard it. Look at verse 3. For we which are believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, he said, there are some people that have not entered into the rest, into the restoration, and they have not entered into the redemption into the salvation of the lord in fact there are some people for the children of israel for them it was forever gone away from their hands they never entered even though the works were finished from the foundation of the world and when jesus christ announced on the cross of calvary and he said it is finished that means the works are finished everything that needs to be done for the salvation of the whole world everything has been finished but don't you know and don't i know don't we know all together there are people that have not entered into that rest they have not entered into that restoration they have not entered into that redemption they have not entered into that salvation because of that that's why we now need to finish christ's unfinished work and we have resources for that and the lord is saying there must be those resources that were taken in our hands and he gave us all those resources and he says i've given you this for one purpose and for one sin and it is to finish the unfinished work that's why the lord jesus christ after he said it is finished he still gave the people the work to do luke chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 49 and behold i sent the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of jerusalem until ye be endured from with power from on high he said i'm going to give you resources what for to do the work to carry on the assignment i'm giving to you because even though i said because now this is after the resurrection and this is after the crucifixion and the burial and resurrection he said even though i said at the point of crucifixion when i was going to give up my life for the salvation of the whole world i said it is finished yes it's finished but do they know in jerusalem do they know in samaria do they know in judea do they know in the uttermost part of the earth and because they do not know yet that's why now the unfinished work the aspect of redemption salvation sacrifice atonement everything is done but now i'm giving you the assignment and the work is just beginning that's why i'm I'm telling you to tarry and to wait in Jerusalem until you may deal with power from on high. Acts chapter 1 
and I'm going to read from verse 1, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, and you'll see that the work is yet to be finished. And so the Lord is saying, go ahead and get it done. We're looking at chapter 1 of Acts, verse 1. It says, the former treatise, have I made of Theophilus of all that of all that jesus began but to do and to teach he said of all that jesus began both to do and to teach that's telling you something he began he didn't finish that one the work of teaching and the work of doing the signs and the wonders that one has not finished you're going to discover something i'm going to just put your finger i'm coming back to acts of the apostles chapter one but I'm, I, I want you to read look at the last words in matthew matthew chapter 28 and the very last word there everybody quickly open your bible matthew chapter 28 was the last word there amen it's done amen it's done because jesus christ went to the cross and then he died and when he died he's finished the work that's the work of redemption come to mark chapter 16 mark chapter 16 and tell me what's the final word there amen he said it's done jesus came into this world and when he came into this world he went about doing good and he under to oppress of the devil because god was with him and then he went to the cross and he died for us and he was buried on a third day he rose again and after that resurrection because of the salvation of humanity and the justification of all the sinners amen it is done and then you come to look look at luke and you're looking at the final uh, the final verse there luke chapter 24 and tell me the last word there that's an amen that's an amen it's done redemption is completed atonement it is done the sacrifice of the lord jesus christ it is done look at john gospel according to saint john and you're looking at chapter 21 there and tell me the last word there amen now let's go to acts of the apostles and look at the final chapter the acts of the apostles we're looking at the final uh, final uh, verse there acts chapter 28 uh, what do you see there the amen is amen there no jesus began after redemption after salvation after the work that he did on the cross of calvary amen it is finished everything you ought to do so that humanity will be saved it is done and both heaven and earth shout amen and now it now opens a new page because that is done that which has not been done that which has not been accomplished that which has not been finalized and settled and finish that is just beginning that's why you come to, that's why you don't have that amen at the end of chapter 28 in, in the acts of the apostles because it's the acts of the apostles in the church and for the world reaching out and reaching out and reaching out and it's still going on and still going on there's no finality yet on that and there's no finish something yet on that it is still going on we're coming back to acts of the apostles now and we're looking at chapter one acts chapter one i'm reading from verse one the former treatise have i made O Theophilus of all that jesus began the preaching it began the working of miracles it began the healing of the sick it began and then the delivery of the press it began of all that he began but to do and to teach the teaching the evangelization it only began at that time salvation finalized atonement finalized the price he paid for redemption finalized but there's still something that continues look at verse 2 until the day in the in which he was taken up after he through the holy ghost had given commandments unto the, unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of god and being assembled together with them he commanded them that they should not that they should not depart from jerusalem but do what again tell me but wait for the promise 
of a father which saith ye ye have heard of me but john truly really baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the holy ghost not many days hence in verse 8 but ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses the work of witnessing that one continues that one has not been finished and jesus began the witness he gave the witness in word he gave the witness in signs and wonders he gave the witness in showing his love he gave the witness in forgiving sinners he gave the witness and the father gave the witness that this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased but that work of witnessing still continues it's not finished yet that work of soul winning it continues it has not finished yet and that work of preaching and proclaiming the truth the glad news and bringing people into the kingdom that has not finished yet that's why it says and you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto, unto, unto the uttermost part of the earth where we'll do it and that's why we're coming here tonight and we're talking about the unfinished work of christ he began it he didn't finish teaching that he began evangelization that he began giving forgiveness to sinners he began and then giving salvation eternal life unto sinners he began but it's not finished yet that's why we need resources for finishing christ's unfinished work we're looking at three points number one revealed fields of christ's unfinished work revealed fields fields of Christ's unfinished work. Number two, readjusted focus on Christ's unfinished work. If we're going to get the work done and we're going to finish it, we must readjust our focus, readjust our activities, readjust the things we put value on. We readjust our focus so that we can concentrate on this Christ's unfinished work. Number three, resources for finishing christ's unfinished work let's come to number one number one we're looking at revealed fields of christ's unfinished work uh, we have an illustration in joshua joshua chapter one in joshua chapter one the lord himself spoke to joshua and he told him what he will do it says in verse three every place is sold of your foot shall tread upon that have i given unto you as i said unto moses from the wilderness and this lebanon even unto the great river the river euphrates all the land of the hittites and unto the great sea the, uh, toward the going down of the sun shall be your course the lord in verse 4 describes the perimeter the territory how large the land will be the possession it was given unto them and he said now you must walk through you must possess everything and you must disengage and drive out all the intruders who are there i've taken the land from them and i've given the land unto you but they're still there you must go there and dislodge them disengage them and displace them while they are here because i have given unto you as you go i'll be going with you but i will not go for you i will go with you but i will not go for you that means if you're sitting back there when i told you i've given you the land and you think i will go for you i will be your servant to go and take it for you while you are resting like a master i will not do that but if you're going every place the soul of your food shall tread upon shall be yours because i'll be with you i'll support you i'll energize you i'll empower you i will give you wisdom and the wisdom to fight against all those people until they're displaced but this is the territory and you must know all those territories so you will know whether you are finished or not chapter 13 of joshua revealing the fields of christ's unfinished work that is not joshua the area that had not been covered 
Let's look at Joshua chapter 13. After, and they were talking about the time now. Already they've crossed River Jordan. What a great feat and great exploit was that. Already the Jericho was in chapter 6. Everything came down. What a great thing is that already Ai had been taken and defeated. And then the Gibeonites had come. And all those people that came together, they overcame the, already a great miracle of the sun standing still and the moon standing still so that Joshua could finish in the battle. All those things have taken in place and yet after all those signs and wonders and great exploits they did for the lord in taking all that they took look at chapter 13 verse 1 now joshua was old and streaking years and the lord said and the lord said and the lord said unto him thou art old and streaking in years and there remaineth yet tell me very much land to be possessed when you could have been rejoicing and singing hallelujah and celebrating thinking we have done it we have conquered all those places and those jericho walls they have come down and we possess this and possess this and possess this the lord who knows the territory that he has given he said joshua you are old and you're well stricken in years and yet there is yet very much not just much but very much very much land to be possessed look at verse 2 this is the land yet remaining that remains all the borders of the philistines all the Gesh, Geshurai, and then he goes on verse 3, and then verse 4, and then verse 5, still telling them all the land that remains to be possessed. And then in verse 6, the part that remains to be possessed, it says in verse 7, Now therefore divide this land for an inheritance unto the night tribes, and then he goes on with whom, then he goes on again, so that they'll be able to receive their inheritance. You know what they have done at this time? All of them were all together to conquer jericho everybody together to conquer ai all the army all the troops all the soldiers together and then in chapter 10 everybody together and then the lord was telling joshua joshua you know what as all of you just went as a team all together and then you are thinking you're going to cover the land that way can i give you strategy can i give you resources can I tell you how you are going to be able to cover the whole land? That's why it says in verse 7, you will now, therefore, at this time now, you are getting old. Well, stricken in years, and there's still yet much land to be possessed if you continue in the same way. And then everybody will go here. And how many years do you have left? That everybody will say, stay together, do this. After we finish, we're we'll still to everybody together. Do divide the land, and you divide it unto them. And when you do that, each division will then concentrate on the portion, on the part that is given unto them as an assignment, and then they will get the work done in quicker time. And that's why the Lord is saying we need to readjust, readjust our focus and readjust our methodology, readjust the way we've been doing it. You know, there's some people they don't understand and they're just saying, But God gave us this, we're all doing it together, and there was no done discipling the whole nation, no strategy. We just did it and did it and did it. Look at Jericho was, it's that already. Was that done at that time? And look at AI. Look at how it came down. Was that done at that time? And look at this and look at this. And everything was there was a kind of we defeated them. And the Lord is saying, Okay, after you've done all that, but look at the much land that remains. Don't you know now you need to readjust, readjust your focus and see that this is the way that you'll be able to capture everything now. I pray we will do it. I said we will do it chapter 18 joshua chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 3 joshua chapter 18 verse 3 and joshua said unto the children of israel how long are ye slack to go to possess the land which the lord god of your fathers has given you he himself now he saw the point he has divided it unto them and instead of everybody rising up immediately and getting it done and joshua is saying you're slow 
your slack all that we have divided and the new strategies we are developing and we say this is the way to go and take the land you're not taking the land like you ought to take the land and joshua said how long are you slack to go to possess the land which the lord god of your fathers has given you give out from among you three men for each tribe and i will send them and they shall rise and go through the land and describe it according to the inheritance of them and they shall come again unto me and do you know what is happening here at, when they were at the border of the land in chapter 2 they said joshua selected two people to represent all the nation the whole nation of israel and see what the lord has given to us everything was being done like you know we're all together we're all together and it is one single person that is trying to say now i choose this two and they went through the land and then they came back and they, they didn't even go too far because they just remained in the inn where rahab was and then rahab said you don't even need to go further i'll tell you the the hearts of all the people are melted because of you because we know the lord has given you the land and then they came back and they said the hearts of the people are melted but you know at this time now he divided the land this is your portion that's your portion that's your portion that's your portion now he said i'm not going to choose two people to represent the whole nation now each of these sections you choose three men you choose three men you choose three men to go and examine your own territory go and make your own research and go and make your own survey that's what the lord is telling us now they were readjusting their focus and their method and their approach so that all this land still remaining they'll be able to have we're going to have them in jesus name and i want to come to acts of the apostles we're looking at the new testament now in the new testament i'm sure you know that when you come to the acts of the apostles you come to chapter two i'm not reading chapter two now i'm actually going very fine to the acts of the apostles when you read chapter two and you find peter rising up and then three thousand becoming converted from all those nations that they came to jerusalem what a great revival and then you look at chapter three silver and gold have i none in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk and that man rose up as a result of that we're told in chapter 4 verse 4 that five thousand came to know the lord and then you have chapter 5 and peter was walking like this and his shadow was healing the sick and multitudes are being added to the church you come to chapter 6 and many of the priests were obedient to the faith and the, this and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in jerusalem and then you come to chapter 7 the the matter matterdom of stephen and then we're told in chapter 8 and all that was scattered abroad they went everywhere preaching the word you come to chapter 9 and then Docas came he was raised from the dead and then that whole city around there people believed on the lord and then chapter 10 you understand how cornelius he said we're all here to hear everything that you have to tell us and then as we're speaking like this the holy ghost came down oh we're seeing now we're seeing so all that has happened it's like peter has finished everything it's like all these 12 apostles they finish everything now we come to chapter 22 chapter 22 far into the acts of the apostles when all those great things wonderful things have happened very much land yet to be possessed that if we're looking at the past this has been done this has been done that has been done it's like we're going to just rest back and feel that everything is fully done acts of the apostles chapter 22 in verse 21 and he said unto me that's the almighty god that's the lord himself calling paul the apostle and you know he was converted much much later it's like you know you are just converted now we we'll finished everything before you came before you came into the kingdom i'm telling you that a lot has happened already in jerusalem in samaria in this place and that place and the people scattered abroad and they and they preach everywhere and you are just coming what do you have to do there's still much 
There's still much for somebody even getting converted today. For somebody just coming into the team of leadership and workers like Paul the Apostle. Still much to be done. Acts chapter 22 and in verse 21. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far. Hence unto the Gentiles. The people that were living far away. The Gentiles. They're not living in Jerusalem. They're not living in Judea. They're not living in Samaria. The uttermost part of the earth. In fact, we have more of the population in all those places far unto the gentiles more than you have in jerusalem or judea or samaria the greater part of the populace had not been reached the greater part of the world had not been reached even though those great things have happened and the lord was telling paul like he told uh, joshua there is yet very much lunch to be possessed in romans chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 21 romans chapter 15 revealing the fields of christ some finished work revealing all the areas that have not been covered that still need to be covered we're looking at romans chapter 15 and reading from verse 21 but as it is written to whom he was not spoken of they shall see and they that have not heard shall understand for the with for which cause also i have been much hindered from coming to you paul the apostle told the people the believers in rome he said you know there's so much land there's so many people in fact i wanted to come to you in rome but i, I just couldn't because i've been hindered from coming because people that have never heard are you not surprised that all the things that have happened were coming from acts chapter 1 all through to Acts chapter 9 before he was born again all through to Acts chapter 10 verse 11 chapter 11 chapter 12 and there are people that have not heard and he said that's because i've not been able to that's the reason i'm not being able to come to you the lord is telling us then that if we open our eyes to see look at the nation you come from look at our nation over here in nigeria and then you see the population more than 150 million people how many people are genuinely saved how many people have really known the lord yes i know that deeper life is there uh, assemblies of god there first court there church of god there and redeemed christian church there winners chapel there when you put all of us together how many people are still outside you have more outside the people that are born again they, that is those who are not born again they are more in number than those who are born again in our country you go to ghana you go to Sri Lanka, you go to liberia you go to uh, burkina faso you go to togo you go to Benin republic you go to niger republic and you go to mali you go to mauritania you go to all those countries west africa east africa central africa southern africa northern africa and think about the people that have not really had the real gospel and the true gospel and if you look at the people that are born again in any of those countries they're the minority you have still have the vast majority that do not know the lord yet that's why the lord is saying there's still yet much land this is not the time to you know just to sit back and say we've done this we've done this we're going to do more i said we're going to do more because of christ's unfinished work we're looking at the word of god here in matthew chapter 9 matthew chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 35 matthew chapter 9 verse 35 here the word of the lord is telling us and jesus went about all the cities and villages well if, if that's all you read you say well everything is done everything is finished because jesus went throughout all the cities and all the villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people but look at verse 36 but when he saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and because they were scattered abroad a sheep having no shepherd after he had gone through all those cities and all those villages it was after that he then saw the multitudes the people that are yet to be rich and now he said in verse 37 then saith he unto his disciples the harvest truly is plenteous but the laborers are what 
the few. He, he was telling them, if you think, because I've gone through all those cities, and I've gone all through all those villages, and then people, every sickness has been healed, everywhere he had gone. If you think because of that, everything is done. He said, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth. That means much work still to be done. The unfinished work, unfinished task still to be accomplished. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. That leads me to point number two. Point number two, we're talking about readjusted focus on Christ's unfinished work. Readjusted focus. If um, you know the time, we have the time of the, uh, the, time of, uh, the harvest. And then the fruits arrive. And we need to, people that to go and reap them. It's at that time you need to adjust, readjust your time. Adjust your schedule or schedule. Adjust the way you spend your time. Adjust the focus you have. Otherwise, that harvest will be wasted. And you know something? Look up here for a moment. When you're expecting a baby in the family. You know what, what, the, what the family does? You have father, you have mother. And a baby is just being born. Now, the way the church normally does, uh, they expect that baby just coming into the church. They expect the baby to adjust. Rather than the parents adjusting. But in a normal family, Family. A baby is about to be born. The mother is pregnant and they're counting days. She will, she will soon deliver. You know what they do? The father begins to adjust and the mother begins to adjust even before that child is born and then they begin to you know clear some things uh, from over there where the baby will be taken care of and then they begin to look at their finances they begin to adjust their finances because a baby is coming they do not expect that it is the baby that will adjust to feed the regular routine of the family but it is the family the parents and the siblings that will adjust because of that baby. The same thing when we're expecting a church to be planted here and babies to be born there and converts to be raised there and those converts to be disciples there, the disciples there. It is the church expecting those converts that will adjust. What kind of understanding will the converts have? What kind of church building will the converts be, wait, be looking for? What kind of music will the converts be looking for? What will keep them? What will interest them? What will make them know that we care for them? But you know, most churches, they continue the way they have always been. And they expect that when those converts come, when those converts are won, immediately the first day of birth and the first day of conversion all those babies they will readjust to match the life and the expectation and the pattern of the parent of the adults in the church it doesn't happen that way that means then if we're really going to do what the lord is calling us to do the things that worked yesterday maybe they're still working working for the adults working for the members and working for the disciples and working for the people who are there but if we're going to get all those converts and we're going to retain them get them and retain them we must adjust we we'll adjust our focus and if we know that people are perishing and that we need to reach them in time we need to readjust everything that we're doing so that by the grace of god we're going to reach out to them i said we're going to reach out to them and you know the joy i have is that you know the membership of our church deeper life once we say this is what to do everybody will say amen we're going to do it and you know sometimes uh, you think that we have opposition we don't you think that we have contradiction we don't you know some of some of our young people and some of you know the members who are here sometimes when i see you and you do some things you know sometimes you're like little children uh, you don't mean that you just do those things you, you say, you're just happy you say you know daddy is there i'm going to tease him and then you know you do all those things just to tease daddy and you're not really serious about that you are in agreement with me i said you're in agreement with me you know some of the people who are here if you don't if you don't understand us you know some of those children there and some of those people there and i say hey come on this is what you do and the other you agree and you smile and say pastor i'm your child we're going along with you and then just to you know show that you are there because you know see there's too many people here he doesn't know anybody and i know that if i do this and this he'll come to me and say what's your name and because they want me to come to you and say what's your name that's why you do what you are doing i understand but i'm not coming at this time i'll come another time praise the lord 
we're in agreement the joy we have in our church is that there's agreement in this church and when we say we're adjusting now and this is what we're going to do and everybody will say yeah. amen we're in agreement in jesus name i want to show you something about this adjustment the people that find it difficult to adjust not you i'm just you know i have to read the bible to you i <laughs> have to read the whole bible i'm looking at a second kings chapter 14 second kings chapter 14 and we're looking at verse 25 second kings chapter 14 verse 25 he restored the coast of israel he restored the coast of israel from the entering of hamas unto the sea of the plain according to the word of the lord god of israel which he spake by the hand of his servant tell me jonah the son of amittai the prophet which was of gas heifer here we find jonah he was working for the lord and he was doing well in israel as long as you give him that assignment in israel and you give him that assignment in his locality great and jonah was just doing the work of the lord and now another call came outside the territory the familiar territory and as he, as the lord told him to go to that familiar territory he found it difficult to adjust to adjust his mind to adjust his program and to adjust his ministry and to know that yes you've done well you've done fine in the land of israel as a prophet to declare the mind of god and through his prophecy and through his ministry there was a restoration in israel but the lord is now saying there are places outside israel and there are fields reached yet and jonah i'm sending you there and the very first thing you do when the lord calls you to a new field that we need to reach is to a readjustment because something new that was not there before that you never thought about before is now coming let's look at jonah chapter one jonah chapter one verses one and two now the word of the lord came unto jonah the son of Amittai. that's the same man arise go to nineveh that great city and cry against it for their wickedness is come up before me you have done so great you have done so well creditably well in the land of israel and you are the candidate for the ministry that will reach the people of nineveh and then you know the story he couldn't adjust i can't do that that's not my specialty I can't go to Nineveh. And you know what happened to him, but eventually in chapter 2, verse 7, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, and into thy holy temple. Jonah, that's exactly what you should have done when you had the new call that there is another field revealed for you to do, go to instead of praying at that late hour after a lot of the property of the marinas have been thrown into the sea after the people are put into shame and they call the prophet oh sleeper wake up and talk to your god after you have been dropped into the sea after the whale swallowed you up after all the pain and the uncertainty of life that came upon you now you are beginning to pray jonah this is what you shall have prayed for help me to adjust my mind adjust my program adjust my way of thinking adjust my world view when you heard that call instead of going through all this suffering before you then began to pray look at verse 8 they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy he came to that realization you should have known that uh, jonah and then he tells us in verse 9 but i will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving i will pay that that i have vowed salvation is of the lord 
I thought Jonah, if you knew that, you should have said that before. When you hear a new call that there's the field to reach out to, instead of waiting until the Lord will drill us and the Lord will push us until the Lord will penalize us for not rising up immediately at the time that the call came that this is the rich field and this is what you do, that's the time we ought to rise up and do it in verse 10. And, and the Lord spake unto the fish. And it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Chapter 3, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. The second time saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that, that great city, and preach unto each the preaching that I bid thee. Why was God so particular about this place? And let's look at chapter 4, verse 11. And should not I spare Nineveh? That great city, wherein are more than six score, that is six times twenty one, twenty thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle. Now, the authorities of the Old Testament have told us that they want twenty thousand. That means uh, that means uh, the children that do not know their left hand from their right. That means the infants. And then, if you think about their family families and you have a family like five to a family five times 120 is a six hundred six hundred thousand and a lot is saying six hundred thousand people that's a great city now think about lagos here lagos is uh, about 20 million if six hundred thousand less than a million if that's a great city then we know that lagos is a mega city and think of the major cities of this land in um, in nigeria here here, and think of the major cities in the various countries in Africa and think of the major cities that will come from the Lord is saying if Nineveh of, of 600,000 people if that was a great city what a great city you have come from and the Lord is saying all these people that do not know their hands from their from their right from their left that is spiritually ignorant ignorant of the way to heaven ignorant of the way to salvation ignorant of eternal life ignorant of the finished work of Christ Calvary. He said, there are so many. Why don't you then adjust yourself and reach out to them? And that's the reason why we're saying any program that is not contributing to the achievement of this, discipling a whole nation. We're kind of putting all those programs behind. We're adjusting ourselves. And we're saying, we need more time. We need more resources. So I can push everything into the great commission. And we're going to do it in Jesus' name. We're looking at First Kings chapter 20 verse 39 verse 40 first kings chapter 20 first kings chapter 20 verse 39 it says and as the king passed by he cried unto the king and he said thy servant went out into the midst of the battle and behold a man uh, turned aside and brought a man brought a man only one man a single man unto me and said Keep this man, if by any means he be missing, then shall thy life be for his life, or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver. This one was just giving a man. You are giving a city. A city of 600,000. A city of 1 million people. A city of 3 million people. A city of 20 million people. We have done the survey over here in Lagos and we discover that uh, the places we call our old, old districts. One old district is uh, you know, about more than 2 million people. Another old district is also more than 2 million people. Another old district, about 3 of them, more than 2 million people. Another one, more than 1.5 million. Another one, more than 1 million. We've done the survey over here at the headquarters and we're expecting that each stage will look at the major cities of the state and each nation will look at the major cities in the nation and see the population and the Lord is saying this man said only one man was committed to me but for us a city a locality of two million people committed into us not just one person but this person that one man was committed into his hand look at verse 40 and as thy servant was busy here and there he was gone he was gone just vanished i can't find him again and then i was told keep this man and as we're busy here and there the city that god has committed into our hands gone and, and jonah never thought that nineveh would repent like that in fact the way he preached see the way he preached 
yet forty days and Nineveh shall be what? shall be overthrown and yet even with that kind of message monotonous message got the same sentence repeated over and over yet those people the spirit of god touched the heart of the king your message will reach the king and all the cabinet your message you reach their cabinet and then all the people and then they set themselves apart and they fasted and waited upon the lord and they cried unto the lord and he said drop everything you want the repentance that jonah did not emphasize it was the king that took over the message and preached that repentance and everybody repented and a whole city all of them became forgiven and saved and then they escaped the judgment of god if that can happen through jonah it will happen through you and uh, 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 you know what you know what at that time jonah did not have any partner we're talking about you know moses and aaron and we're talking about uh, joshua and caleb and we're talking about paul and peter and we're talking about peter and john and we're talking about paul and Barnabas. we're talking about paul and silas in the case of jonah jonah and jonah alone no other person and then jonah did not have all the choir around all the singers around all the ocean they're good when they are there but what if they are not there and you know thank god we even have alternatives now if the choir is not there you have the tapes the ghs from one to 250 you can find them in the cd and the mp3 and then you can play it in that new church and then the choir all the choir pieces that you know you have recorded all these years from your locality and from your state and everything you can get it from your state capital in that state if you say we're planting this new church and there's no choir yet no problem you can just like go to your headquarters uh, you know at the at the state capital and then you can have all those tapes and when it comes to choir time just play that to them even when you don't have all the workers you can still do the work of the lord jonah did it you will do it in jesus name and uh, that means then as the lord is saying all this we need to readjust readjust your mind if there's no choir we cannot do anything if there's no pieces and we cannot do anything if there's no electricity you can not do anything at the time of jesus there was no electricity at the time of paul the apostle there's no electricity and yet they went everywhere and they covered the land we're going to cover the land it's just a matter of readjusting your priority and readjusting your focus and readjusting your mind and your worldview and understanding that what you have done is just a kind of a minute a little drop in the ocean the lot myriads of people multitudes of people that are still waiting and then look at that verse 40 and as the servant passed at the the servant was busy here and there he was gone and the king of israel said unto him so shall thy judgment be thyself as decided it i pray you will not come to judgment let's come to nehemiah chapter 6 nehemiah I am. We're looking at chapter 6. Nehemiah chapter 6. I'm reading there from verse 2. Nehemiah chapter 6. We're looking at verse 2 and see how you need to readjust your mind and your focus and your schedule so that you will do what the Lord has called you to do. Nehemiah chapter 6. I'm reading there from verse 2. And Sambalach and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in this in the plain of ono but they thought to do me mischief and i sent messengers unto them saying i am doing a great work anybody doing a great work here where are you you're doing a great work all the distractions will push them aside they'll try to call you come for this and come for this and come for that you're doing such a great work the salvation of souls greater than any other thing that you can think about in the world. It says, I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? Yet, they sent unto me four times after this sword. And I answered them after the same manner. Then Sambalach, his servant, uh, his servant uh, unto, sent his servant unto me. In like manner, the feast time with an open letter in his hand, wherein was written, it is reported among the heathen. And Geshmo um, says it, that thou and the Jews seek to rebel. 
For which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king according to these words, and thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. Now shall it be reported unto the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. Now, he put a big lie, a big slander, put all that together, and he wrote it in a letter. And he didn't seal the letter, an open letter. He said, go and give it to him. This one will frighten him. We're going to report it to the king that you are in conspiracy with some people. You are raising up people so that you can be a big man, a king over them. And then you will say, don't listen to the king anymore. I am the king here. And you are appointing prophets. All these strategies you said you are developing. And you say, disciple, hold nation you appoint this one here this one here this one here you are appointing them for yourself so that they can be talking about you uh, give it to him now come let us talk together about this fact about this matter that we have discovered and said go back and tell him there's nothing like that all this is just to stop the work look at verse 8 then i sent unto him saying there are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou finest them out of thine own heart. And that Nehemiah readjusted his mind that no matter what they say or what they do, that this work the Lord had committed into his hand, he was going to finish it. You are going to finish it. The unfinished task and the unfinished work of Christ that the Lord has now called us to. And let's look at uh, chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. As the same chapter, after what? I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehetabel, who was, who was shut up. And he said, let us meet together. In the house of God. This one is going to be in the house of God. Now we are going to meet together there within the temple. And let us shut the doors of the temple. For they will come and slay thee. They will come and kill you. Yea, in the night they will come to kill you. That is, if you, you, you are heady and stubborn. And then you are willful. And say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Because of this new assignment and this new approach. The certainly whole nation. They are coming to kill you. We have secret information. In fact, the letters are personal. They have built the strategy. And they have finalized everything. And they will come upon you suddenly. You know, sometimes as the Lord is raising us up and saying, get this done and get this done. Sometimes somebody will write a letter. And then they will be circulating that letter. I went to a crusade somewhere. And then after we finished the crusade, you know, there was a particular kind of slander. And he said this and this and this. And then, you know, the kind of things they said there about money they said he has 90 million dollars and then when you look at that uh, letter they put it on the letter the papers of the security agent in the country and then i looked at the letter i said who can be writing something like this if i have 90 million dollars standing somewhere how will the church be you know raising a uh, tithes and offering and this and that and we're building this we have nothing we're building we have not finished and so i gave the letter to one of our people that she you know works in that kind of i said look at the letter coming from your office and coming from this uh, you know a security outfit and then they went there and they said that letter is fake because you know the letter that paper of that security of number has a particular what, security line and then when they looked at it, they said this one is fake and then they just threw it away and they said there's nothing to that just to write something and you know they make things to fly around like that when you are up and doing and when you say we're getting the land we're going here we're going here we're going there is then somebody will write something and then to threaten you and to frighten to make you say go and hide yourself go somewhere don't let anybody see you because they mark you down as number one they are targeting you if they see you on the street on any crusade you are gone i am still here i said i am still here you'll still be there for the work of the lord in jesus name i will never leave you i will never forsake you the lord says i'm present with you all the time look at verse 11 and i said should such a man as i flee and which who is there that being as i am would go into the temple to save his life i will not go in you will do the work of god 
And that's what the Lord is telling us that there's something to do. You adjust your focus, you adjust your mind, you adjust your worldview so that it will be done. Point number three now resources for finishing Christ's unfinished work. Resources for finishing Christ's unfinished work. We're looking at first Corinthians, first Kings, first Kings chapter 19, first Kings chapter 19. And I'm reading there from verse 15. I was reading about Elijah now. This is Elijah who had destroyed some of the false prophets of Baal. This is Elijah who after he has brought fire down from heaven, he became afraid because Jezebel said, I hear, they gave me information. This is what you have done. I'm going to be after you. And by this time tomorrow, if I am Jezebel, I'm the queen in this land. What you've done to those prophets of Baal, I'm going to do something. That man became afraid. You will not be afraid. I said you will not be afraid. Well, you know, Elijah is so very much different from who you are. It's different from who I am. Think about it now. You are in the state of Assyria, and the whole state is praying for you every meeting day, every Sunday. And Elijah did not have anybody to pray for him like that. You are a state of Assyria. You have a wife. You have children. You have workers. And you have the people around you. Elijah never had anybody like that. And you are a state of Assyria, region of Assyria, even a location pastor and your people congregation that they are praying and they're walking along with you elijah never had anybody like that so you cannot say well if elijah was discouraged and even wanted to give up then i can give up. he didn't even have an assistant nobody that elijah had not come at that time you're very different and you have resources and your people that you don't even know that that he didn't know that yet i'm looking at chapter 19 of first kings and verse 15 and the lord said unto to him go return on thy way to the wilderness of damascus and when thou comest anoint Azael to be king over syria and jehu the son of nimshai shall thou anoint to be king over israel and elisha the son of shephat of abel meholam shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room and it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Azael shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth the sword of Jehu shall Elisha, shall Elisha slay. And yet have I, I have left me how many seven thousand in Israel all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal and every mouth which have not kissed him elijah was ignorant of those seven thousand men he could have brought them together in a conference like this seven thousand he could have passed on the vision the fire the power the revelation and the desire to get the work done he could have passed to all those seven thousand people he did not if he could got the whole of israel together and if he could say to them how long are you going to stand between two opinions if god be god let's serve him and then if Baal is god let us serve him if he could get them together he could get seven thousand people together who hate Baal, who hate idolatry and he could join hands with him but he did not he didn't even know elisha he didn't even know jehu and the lord is saying i know them and the lord had to be giving him the names that the resources that he had that he did didn't know and we have the resources and we're going to do the work in jesus name let me just point to you point your attention to this one of the resources that's jehu the other resource the other thing that the lord the other person the lord gave him you have elisha let's think about jehu for a moment in second kings chapter 10 verse 20 but jehu said proclaim a solemn assembly for bear and proclaim it and then jehu sent through all israel and all the worshippers of Baal came, so that there was not a man led that came not, and they came into the house of Baal, and all and the house of Baal was full from one end to another. Look at verse twenty-five, and it came to pass as he as it came to pass as soon as he had made an end of offering burnt offering that jehu said unto the guard and to the captives go in and slay them 
Let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword. And the guards and the captains cast them out. And went to the city. Or, or to the house of Baal. And then it says, And they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal. And burnt them. And they break down the image of Baal. And break down the house of Baal. And made it a drudge house unto this day. And thus Jehu did what? Tell me out loud. Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. And Elijah did not know Jehu when he was complaining. I'm the only one left. And I've tried a little. And all those prophets of Baal I killed. And there are still thousands of the worshippers of Baal there. Who is going to do this? And I'm tired already. Let me go home. Let me die. I'm not better than any of my fathers. And the Lord said, there are resources there that will do and that can do what you never imagine will be done and then elisha you know the story of elisha that prophet that received the double portion of the spirit of god the lord is telling us to get this work done the resources are there we're going to use you will use them in jesus name i need to point something to your attention in first samuel chapter 22 for samuel chapter 22 and we're looking at david in this case now resources resources that we sometimes belittle them we sometimes think they cannot do any what can they do let's look at the resources that david had we're looking at chapter 22 of first samuel for samuel chapter 22 i'm reading from verse 1 and they, david therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of adulam and when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down hither to him. Look at verse 2. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him, and they became a captain over them, and there were they, there were with him about four hundred men you know david he was running about and saul had thousands in his army and here was david david all alone and he was to fight against all this and be able to preserve his life and become the king in israel eventually and the people that came to him they were not people that you will see can be useful at all the people that were in distress and the people that are owing debts and the people were discontented and then all these people gathered and say, he could have said, uh, you're not the kind of people I need at this time. I need some strong people. I need some elites. I need some people that can get this done and get this done. I don't need you at this time. Thank you for coming. But I, I need some support at this time. Supporters that have weight. Supposed to have some power and some skill and some training, but David accepted them the way they were in debt, in distress, and all that. Let's look at the next chapter, verse ch chapter 23, verse 13. Chapter 23, verse 13. Then David and all his men, all those discontented people, the which were about 600, arose and departed out of Kela and went whithersoever they could go. They now became 600. Chapter 27 verse 2 in chapter 27 we're looking at verse 2 now it says in verse 2 david arose and he passed over with the 600 men that were with him unto Achish. these were people that were just running away from saul and from the army of saul but in the meantime david was training them he was training them he was training them even though they were distressed even though they were in debt, even though they were discontented, and yet all along he kept on training them. We're now coming to Second Samuel chapter twenty-one. Second Samuel chapter twenty-one, and you are going to see what happened over here. He had trained them to the point. Now they now did something. Second Samuel chapter twenty-one, and I'm reading there from verse fifteen. Second Samuel chapter twenty-one. We're looking at verse fifteen. Moreover. The Philistines had yet war against Israel, and David went down, and his servants, that is all these 600 with him, with, with him, and fought against the Philistines, and David waxed faint, and Ishbenoth, 
is Benos, which was of the sons of the giants, a relative of Goliath that he had killed. The weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight. He, being guarded with a new sword, sought to have slain, to have killed David. And Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, succored David, succored him, and he smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swear unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. You know, David is, is still wanted to be fighting along with them. And I was getting older and older and fighting. But all these 600 that he has trained, one of them then came and killed that Philistine. And then everybody said, David, you've done enough. We will finish the race. You will finish it. I said you will finish it. And now look at this. And it came to pass that after this that there was again a battle with the philistine at god that sheba child at the hosha side slew same and then it says which was of the sons of the giants and there was again a battle in god with the philistines where elah Nan, the son of Jare Oregim, and a Bethlehemite slew the brother of the brother of who? Goliath, the Gator. Not David. It wasn't David that slew this one. The people that he had trained. You know, you, you understand that David had five stones that he wanted to use, and he only used one. Why? Why five stones? There were five people like Goliath. Goliath and his four brothers. And those four brothers were still alive. And David had not had a chance to use the four stones that was laid. He only cast one and Goliath came down. And the story we're reading now says that David did not kill the rest of the four. The people that followed him, that he trained, the resources that were there, that he didn't know that were there, they were the people that took on all those people. It says the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Verse 20, and there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature that arch on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes four and twenty in number and he also was born to the giant and it says and when he defied israel jonathan the son of shimea the brother of david slew him look at verse 22 these four the four brothers of goliath these four were born to the giant in gath and fell by the hand of david and by the hand of his servants that's what you're saying david never knew that he had people that he had trained they was training he didn't know that all these people in distress all these people in dead all these people are discontented that they could do such mighty acts that eventually they did and what you are saying is all the members of the churches that we have they've been there for three years or four years or five years or seven years and they're just sitting down there and you are still saying they are not qualified they are not qualified they have this they have this get them up and brush them up and polish them up and train them they will do the work with us i said they will do the work with us because now as we're planting new churches and planting new locations all the people that we think were not qualified before the grace of god will qualify them in jesus name chapter 23 from verse 1 second samuel chapter 23 from verse 1 now these be the last words of david david the son of jesse and the man who was raised up on high the anointed of the god of jacob and the Swiss psalmist of Israel said, The Spirit of the Lord speak by me, and his word was in my tongue. You see, David, this David, as much as he had, all these good things that he had, he passed it on. That's why he gave us the Psalms. You know, if he didn't adjust his time, if he's only fighting the Amalekites and fighting the Philistines and fighting this and fighting this, all that he preserved for us in his hands, he will not have been able to do. And when our pastors, when our overseers, when they are the only people sweating and getting the work done, there are some other areas of work 
that we need to do and it is by adjusting our mind adjusting our time adjusting our worldview and the responsibilities we have i need to drop that so i can do this other thing i need to give that to other people so i can do this other thing i need to be able to you know drop this and give it to some sisters some brothers so that i can concentrate on this other thing that is the readjustment that we need so that the work we need to do at this time will do it together in jesus name let's come to second samuel second samuel chapter 23 are you there second samuel chapter 23 verse 8 these be the names of the mighty men whom david had he had mighty men eventually those distressed men and those discontented men and those people that were in debt after training them for some time they now became mighty men it says in verse 8 it talks about the touch monite and then it says that such in the siege of the chief among the captains the same was adino and then it says the s night then it tells us he lit up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time he trained one of those people that were able to slay 800 at one time you know some of the people that were resting up they'll be able to have a church as large as 800 i thought you'll say good amen in verse 9 after this after him was eliezer the son of dodo the aohite one of the three mighty men with david one of the three mighty men all the people already about before discontented and distressed and you know they, they were refrapped in the world and they came to him at the time they came to him there were nobody but at it he trained them up this year is going to be a year of training that you train all the people we're no more saying you have a few workers all those members were going to transform them to become leaders and workers and soul winners and witnesses and preachers in jesus name that's what he did for them and they were told it says of the three mighty men of david when they defied the philistines that were there gathered together to the battle and the men of israel were gone away he arose and he smote the philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave unto the sword and the lord wrought a great victory that day and the people returned after him only to spoil and after him was shaman the son of ajim and then says the hararite and the philistines were gathered together into in it into a troop there was a piece of ground full of lentils and the people fled from the philistines but then it says in verse 12 but he alone he stood in the midst of the ground and he defended it and he slew the philistines and the lord wrought a great victory look at the people that david restored out of those uh, people that were like nobodies then he tells us in verse in verse 13 and three of the thirty chief went down and came to david in the at this time and they were told unto the unto the cave of adulam and the troop of the philistine speech in the valley of rephaim it says and david was then in an hold and a garrison of the philistines was then in bethlehem and then david wanted to drink water the water from bethlehem and these people went through the garrison of the philistines and they brought the water unto him they did things they did things and we have people like that that will go forth with courage that will go forth with might and they will do great mighty things in jesus name look at verse 18 and abishai the brother of joab the son of zeruiah was chief among the three and he lifted up his spear against how many 300 and slew them and at the name among the three well it goes on and on and on and the lord is telling us all the people that are there we may need to readjust and readjust the assignment so that now they will be pastors they'll be preachers and they'll do the work of the lord we don't have time if you come to the new testament you're going to find out 120 in the upper room in uh, chapter one three thousand in uh, the church in uh, chapter two and then you have another five thousand in chapter 4 and multitudes in chapter 5 and a great number of priests that were obedient to the faith in chapter 6 and the 
apostles only were doing the work and he said we'll give ourselves to the ministry of the word and to prayer how about all the 120 how about all the 3,000 how about all the 5,000 how about the company of priests they were priests already before and now they become converted and they have the word of God and they're obedient to the faith why do we just leave them like that and he now said we're looking for men that are filled with the Holy Ghost that will serve tables that's how they chose Stephen and look at Stephen the, the one they chose to be served tables just like a deacon just like you know doing some many other things that anybody can do when they confronted that man were told that when they saw his face they saw his face like that of an angel and they were not able to confront his wisdom and eventually this is the one that saw Jesus Christ on the right hand of the almighty God and he said Lord Jesus receive my spirit one of the seven they said should be serving tables and he went to Samaria and they were told the whole of Samaria they came to the Lord and the apostles had just made him to be serving tables and then the rest of the people all the people that were scattered all the, the people 120 minus 12 that is the 120 apart from the apart from the apostles and then the 3000 and then the 5000 all these people now and they that were scattered abroad they went everywhere what were they doing preaching the word but when they were in jerusalem they were just attending service just attending fellowship and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine just learning and just hearing but now when the persecution came all these people like the people of david that he trained up we're going to train them up i said we're going to train them up and then the unfinished work of christ that still remains you and i was then with all our members we're going to rise up as a mighty army of the lord and we're going to take every nation in this continent we're going to take it for the lord are you ready where are you rise up then and say lord i'll be a candidate that will do it